Well, hello, and thanks for watching another episode of ARFCOM News, your twice-weekly dose of the finest to a propaganda. Now, from time to time, I use this platform to tell you folks about a gun turn-in event. Now, I do this for a few reasons. One, is so you good folks can make some money. Another reason is so you can save historical firearms from the shredder. Shredder! And yet another reason is to destroy the morale of the control freaks, and it looks like we might be winning on that front because the city of Warner Robins, Georgia, is hosting such a low effort gun turn in event, they won't even be giving out gift cards. Don't know why anybody would bother with it, but I'm sure it is a convenient way for criminals to dispose of evidence. Meanwhile, the draconian laws in the upside down under are totally impotent. Because you can't stop the signal, information flows freely, and free men yearn to be armed, Aussies are squirting their guns at home and their government is powerless to stop them. It's totally illegal, of course, even having the file could get them locked up. At the same time, their police state government is powerless to know what they are doing, if Australians are even the slightest bit discreet. But hey, it would be impossible for us to produce quality to a propaganda without sponsors, so let's pay some bills. Today's video is sponsored by Franklin Armory. Franklin Armory, those freedom facilitators who brought you twice the pews with their binary firing system because it's a scientific fact that bad guys with twice as many holes in them are half as dangerous. So in the unfortunate event you should ever need your firearm for defense, remember, it's math. It can't be wrong. And by Vortex, their new Defender line of red dots features a constant on emitter with no flicker and shake awake so it is always ready. The Defender CCW is impressively compact for daily carry, the ST is a bit larger, and the XL is an absolute beast with one of the largest windows available on a micro red dot. And by TNVC. In case you haven't noticed, it's dark half the time on this planet, so unless you got shiny eyes like Riddick, you're gonna need TNVC so you can keep tabs on Man Bear Pig while he's shooting dice with Wendigos and Skinwalkers in your front yard. The police in Greenville, South Carolina say they found a missing teenager hiding in a dryer in an apartment where 10 other Utes were squatting. They had an impressive collection of weed and guns, uh, much nicer than anything I had at that age. But Gravthar's hammer though, look at that. Is that a seven inch 50 Beowulf pistol with a big ass drum? I mean, they only had nine rounds, but it looks sick with the drum, right? So I put my investigative journalism hat on and I did some research and I found out it's actually not legal in South Carolina for minors to carry guns or break into apartments and squat there or sell drugs. Yet the cops have not announced any charges for the Utes or their parents. This is the platonic ideal of what gun violence looks like, folks. It, it's not the guns or the drugs causing the problem. It's the feral children running around without parenting and a justice system that holds neither the child nor the parents accountable until suddenly one day they are 18 and now they can start cycling in and out of prison. Control freaks would have you believe this fundamentally broken arrangement would suddenly repair itself if they could just ban one more thing. It's frustrating because it is so entirely disingenuous. Because we know that they don't believe it either. They only care about making things more troublesome for the people they perceive as the other. Those icky gun owners. And hey, 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 hey. Brett Hankinson was convicted in federal court of violating Breonna Taylor's civil rights and those of her neighbors when he came to her home in the dead of night with several other cops with a warrant they obtained with false information and blasted several rounds through her home and her neighbor's place. Hankinson did not himself fire the rounds that killed Breonna, but he did violate her rights by serving a fraudulent warrant. The police claim they knocked and announced their fraudulent search warrant several times before going Kool-Aid mode. And honestly, why would the people who lied to get a warrant lie about what happened during a fatal shooting? For some strange reason, after they smashed in the door in the middle of the night, Brianna's boyfriend fired a shot in their direction. Naturally, that gave them a good reason to send a hail of lead through the neighbor's apartment where they somehow managed not to kill a man, a pregnant woman, and a five-year-old kid. And no, they didn't find any of the Hunter S. Thompson drug collection the search warrant was for, and they weren't looking for the woman they shot or her boyfriend. They were actually there looking for her ex. So far, Hankinson is the first cop in that shooting to get any sort of real justice. 
But what does this have to do with gun rights, says the slow kid in the back. It's kind of like that kid in math class that asks, uh, teacher, where are we ever going to use this? And you just know the teacher is aching to tell him, well, Aiden, I doubt you ever will need it, but some of your colleagues will go on to careers that don't involve a paper hat. Now, let's say you're sleeping and you hear somebody bust into your home. This is America and you have the right to be armed, so you give them the what for, but it turns out it was the government, so you don't have rights. Why? Cause fuck them, that's why. I mean, for the neighbors who were just laying there sleeping peacefully and minding their own business, it wasn't so much of a 2A right as it was their Fourth Amendment rights that were violated, and for that matter, the founders probably didn't figure they had to tell the government it isn't allowed to just stand out there outside your house and shoot through somebody's house while they sleep. Imagine you found a handgun. Now, you're probably not a felon, so you can have a gun. But then again, you did find it, so who knows where it's been, and you wouldn't want to get caught with a stolen gun, so maybe it's better for you to just turn it into police, right? Now imagine you are a felon, and the gun you found was your dead brother's, and he was definitely involved in some shady sh But you're trying to get your life in the right direction, so you tell your parole officer and he calls the cops and has you arrested. That's what happened to Stephen Cooper more than two years ago. Now, he's been fighting since the legal system since then not to have to go back to prison over it. He agreed to plead guilty for probation, but the prosecutor wanted prison. After a lot of back and forth in the courts, he was finally allowed to get probation for a guilty plea recently, and he entered his plea. Now, I'm not saying this guy is an angel. There are a lot of details about his rough transition back into the world in the excellent article on bearing arms. But so far as I'm concerned, he proves exactly what I've been saying for years. When you release a man from prison, you give him access to guns and other weapons, whether you want him to have it or not. You should not let a person out of prison until you are ready for him to have access to guns. Now, before I get to your moment of zen, I just want to give you a quick heads up that Pete Brownell himself will be hitting our forums today for an AMA answering your questions about Brownells, the gun industry, or anything else you may want to know. We'll drop a link down there in the doobly-doo, as is our custom, so go ahead and check that out. But now, for your moment of zen. Oh my god, so many Hey friends, do you like pews and pew related things? Would you like to help us keep delivering you We literally couldn't pay our bills without sponsors, so do us a solid and get yourself something nice from them. You deserve it. I love you.